can't innovate anymore, my ass. Let's talk about the Mac Pro. No, not the iMac Pro, but the Mac Pro. So the trash can Mac Pro is finally getting an update this year in 2018. It's been confirmed by Apple, so everything is official. And here's everything you can expect from Apple's most powerful Mac yet, the 2018 Mac Pro. So grab some snacks, such as popcorn or some nuts, and enjoy. Probably no one's gonna take me serious with this shark shirt. But okay, if you're familiar with the Mac Pro, you probably know that this is not just Apple's most expensive computer, but it's also Apple's most powerful computer, at least that was, that was the case when it launched. So the current gen Mac Pro hasn't been updated since 2013. So essentially this year marks the fifth anniversary since the trash can Mac Pro got any updates. And yes, in case you're wondering, five years later, with no updates and the price has remained the same. Actually, it even increased in the UK because of Brexit. Well, actually, that was, you know, that was Apple's excuse for increasing the price. But now that the iMac Pro has been released, the price actually went down for the Mac Pro slightly. So everyone, you should all get a Mac Pro because it's, it's cheaper. No, I'm, I'm just joking. There were quite a few issues with the Mac Pro even when it launched. So the main issue at the moment is that it's slow. So when you're doing video editing, it's actually at the moment much faster uh, doing video editing on a MacBook Pro because it supports Intel QuickSync. So the video exports are going to be much, much faster, sometimes even four to five times faster than on a $10,000 Mac Pro, which is crazy if you think about it. But even when it launched in back in 2013, there were some other issues, such as the fact that it wasn't upgradable at all. At least when it came to the GPU, it was a custom-made GPU by AMD, so that one wasn't really upgradable. Uh, and then another issue with the GPU was the fact that most third-party apps didn't even use the second AMD Fire Pro graphics card. So the previous Mac Pro, however, the uh, Tower Mac Pro, that one came out in 20, 2006, and that one was actually fully upgradable. So this is what Apple will be going back to with this new Mac Pro 2018. So towards the end of 2017, Phil Schiller and also Craig Federighi both said that Apple's working on a completely revamped Mac Pro. So there we go. This is Apple's official press release for when uh, for when the iMac Pro became available to order, which was on December 14th. And they talked about the display. They mostly talk about the amazing the amazing performance, workstation class performance in an iMac design. Essentially, this is what the iMac Pro is for. It's a replacement for the Mac Pro, or at least for people who need extra performance right now and they don't want to wait for the big Mac Pro update. And from all the benchmarks that we've seen right now, the iMac Pro is significantly, actually not slightly, significantly more powerful than, uh, than the Mac Pro in terms of 3D modeling, video editing, pretty much everything. But that kind of makes sense because, you know, it came out like four years later, uh, four years after the Mac Pro. So it should obviously be faster, right? And yes, the iMac Pro is almost perfect. It comes with that 5K Retina display. It's, it's significantly faster than the Mac Pro. However, the iMac Pro actually lacks in three places, uh, three big places. So number one, we have the GPU. So it does come with the AMD Vega 64 graphics, which is a monster of a GPU. This is perfect for video editing, perfect for even gaming in 4K. Yes, this is a very, very capable card. This is the top of the line desktop card from AMD, but it's a consumer grade card. It's not a workstation grade card like the iMac Pro, uh, like the Mac Pro has. And the, the Mac Pro actually has two workstation grade GPUs, not just one. So if you're doing advanced 3D modeling, animation, or even some high-end video editing, such as working in 4K RAW with a ton of effects, yes, the iMac Pro can handle that, but a workstation grade GPU would handle it even better. And then the second issue with the, with the iMac Pro was the cooling system. So yes, the iMac Pro has a completely revamped cooling system, but the Mac Pro's one is so, so much better. You have a central cooling uh, system essentially, and then all the components are uh, sticked, stuck to, uh, to that uh, main uh, cooling system, to that main fan. And essentially when you have a good cooling system, the components will stay cool, uh, there won't be any thermal throttle, and you'll also get much better performance in the end, not even to mention much less noise. And finally, the third issue with the iMac Pro is the fact that it's not upgradable. I mean, yes, you can remove the display and you can replace the CPU and even the flash storage and the memory with better ones, but then you void your warranty, not even to mention that it's a pain to do that. So the iMac Pro was clearly not designed to be upgradable uh, by Apple. When they designed this, they didn't design it to be upgradable by the user. They even removed, by the way, the RAM slot on the back, so you cannot even replace the RAM yourself, which is something that you can still do with the current generation iMacs. But all of these issues would be fixed with a brand new Mac Pro. So going back to that press release that I was talking about when uh, Apple released the iMac Pro, Apple even states on the bottom that, quote, in addition to the new iMac Pro, 
Apple is working on a completely redesigned next-generation Mac Pro architected for pro consumers who needed the highest performance, high throughput system and a modular upgradable design, as well as a new high-end Pro display. So there you go, brand new Mac Pro confirmed by Apple in the press release, as well as by Phil Schiller and Cred Federighi. And they've actually said that this new Mac Pro would be coming in 2018. About a year later, uh, I mean, about a year after the iMac Pro. But then Cred Federighi, he also stated that the 2013 Mac Pro design, it had a limited thermal capacity, which is a bit funny because that Mac literally has the best cooling system on any Mac that Apple currently sells. But yeah, you wouldn't be able to fit a Titan V in that thing, in case you're wondering. So uh, it's not necessarily the cooling system that's not perfect for a Titan V or something like that, but it's also the fact that it's quite small, so there's not enough room for valuable components, so to say. So not only is it Apple working on a brand new Mac Pro, but they're also working on a brand new display. So Apple was selling that Thunderbolt display a while ago, if you remember that. Uh, they discontinued it and they released a brand new not a Thunderbolt display, but an LG Ultra Fine 5K display as a replacement in partnership with, of course, LG. Now, I do own that monitor and it's it's good. So the panel is exactly the same one as on a 5K iMac. So you do get a monitor with a 5K iMac display, but it still has some display issues, uh, some connection issues, some build quality issues, not even to mention the speaker issues. They're not that great. And I don't know, considering the price, I, I would say that that's completely unacceptable. So Apple will be replacing this with an Apple display probably even one with a resolution higher than 5k such as 8k because otherwise i don't see the point in apple teasing this display so 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 much if it was just i don't know an lg ultra fine 5k display with a better design now in terms of this new mac pro we know that it's going to be both modular and also fully upgradable so in many ways it's going to be very similar to the old mac pro to the old uh, tower mac pro where you could literally replace anything you, you wanted. Now, when it comes to the design, I don't really see Apple going back to that tower design. I, I do see Apple using a similar trash can design as the 2013 MacBook Pro, just obviously wider and taller for better cooling and bigger components, at least when it comes to the GPU. So we've actually made a concept, by the way, of how this new Mac Pro could look like. Uh, that's if, if it's still going to feature a design similar to the trash can Mac Pro. And I really think, I really think that it will. The design wasn't that bad. It was actually pretty good. It was a very good looking product. So we just need something larger with better specs and a better cooling system. Now, speaking of the specs, the CPU is more than likely going to be a Xeon processor, same as the previous generation and the iMac Pro. So it could be the Xeon V6 Canon Lake chips, but those are only coming out in 2019. So in that case, the, uh, the Mac Pro could be delayed or Apple could use the same Xeon W processors that, that they use inside the iMac Pro, so that could be another option. So a V6 or W, more than likely Xeon, obviously, uh, in the Mac Pro 2018. Now, when it comes to the GPU, I do see Apple uh, continuing their partnership with AMD for this. So an upcoming, maybe even an, a custom-made AMD workstation-grade GPU. So a workstation-grade GPU is what's probably going to be included by AMD in, uh, in the Mac Pro, in the new Mac Pro. So AMD hasn't actually said anything about an upcoming workstation grade GPU. Their highest end graphics card is actually the Vega 64. So I am waiting for them to unveil something in 2018, but regardless of what GPU this thing is going to come with, you'll be able to replace it with pretty much anything you wish in theory, because this is like Apple says, a modular upgradable system. So you could use an Nvidia card if you wish, you could use a different AMD card if you wish, but essentially, out of the box, this thing should come with workstation grade GPUs, most likely from AMD, which again, have, haven't been released yet, but something should be coming very soon. Now, in terms of the RAM, the iMac Pro actually supports up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. The Mac Pro should go even higher, up to maybe even more than 256 gigabytes. Now, when it comes to the storage, the iMac Pro supports up to four terabytes of flash storage in RAID 0. How awesome is that? The Mac Pro could go even higher, by the way, up to eight terabytes in, uh, in RAID 0. Now, keep in mind that the flash storage and the RAM should be upgradable. According to Apple, everything is modular and upgradable. So even if you don't pick the uh, the highest end option, you should be, you know, you should be fine with the lowest end and you can just upgrade it when you wish. That's the whole idea, the whole point of this new Mac Pro. Now, speaking of upgradability and replacing parts with new ones, I don't know if Apple would go as far as allowing you to change something like the Wi-Fi card or the fans or the power supply. Probably not. 
but we should have some usable PCIe, uh, PCIe ports in any case. So I do see that being the case, which wasn't the case with the Mac Pro, the 2013 Mac Pro. And then a new report coming from Mac Gurman says that Apple is actually developing three new Mac models featuring the new T2 processor for release in 2018. Now, in case you don't know what this is, the T2 processor is something that's exclusive to the iMac Pro. And this is a processor that handles the boot sequence, the SSD RAID management, uh, the drive encryption, the speakers, the camera, the fans, instead of having multiple controllers for each or using the main CPU, which would affect the performance a tiny bit. So this is sort of like the brain behind the brain, so to say. So three new Mac models would be coming with this. A new iMac, definitely. A new MacBook Pro, probably. And either a new MacBook or a new Mac Pro. Most likely a Mac Pro because, you know, the 12-inch MacBook doesn't really need a T2 chip because it's a, you know, entry-level Mac. So they'll probably omit it from that. So there we go. Three new Mac models confirmed to be coming or at least uh, reported to be coming with the T2 processor in 2018. But there we go. Everything we know about the upcoming Mac Pro in 2018. So let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this new Mac Pro. If you already have an iMac Pro, which I didn't by the way, I didn't get one, I'm waiting for the Mac Pro, are you going to upgrade to a Mac Pro or not? Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. And already that, subscribe if you want to see more interesting tech videos and more leaks rumors episodes like this one. And also don't forget to hit notifications by tapping on that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as a brand new cool video comes out. And yeah, this has been pretty much it. So thank you for watching. I'm Daniel. For if you like, if you enjoyed it, let me know. I'm Daniel. That was a really fast spoken outro and a video. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel. Uh, yeah. Cheers. Not an awkward outro.